So, Skip, I want to ask you your final takeaway from covering the Bulls in 1998 and that season. Jenny, in all my years in this business, I've never found myself in something so baffling, so confounding, so troubling, and ultimately so mind-blowing as what I found myself in the middle of in 1998 as the columnist for the Chicago Tribune, watching The Last Dance from the inside out, big sit-down interviews in late March with Jerry Krause, the GM, and then in early May during the Charlotte playoff series, big sit-down in Phil Jackson's office with the coach of the Bulls. And what I heard from each of these two men, whose relationship obviously had completely deteriorated, was just difficult for me to process. And I remind everybody, I had just come to Chicago before that season, straight from Dallas, Texas, where I'd written three books about the Dallas Cowboys. The second of those books predicted that Jerry Jones would soon fire Jimmy Johnson. That was after their first Super Bowl. Obviously, they won a second together, and then Jerry fired Jimmy, as my book predicted, in the final chapter would happen. Everybody told me I was out of my mind then, but I said, no, this is predictable. That blow up, I got. This one, I, I still can't get. And Shannon, here's the point. During that playoff run, I caught Michael after one game, and I told him that, that Phil was just openly saying, and we were all presuming that if Phil got fired, if his contract didn't get renewed, and, and we knew that was going to happen because he and Jerry had fallen completely apart, that everybody presumed that Michael was going to go too. And Phil was openly saying to everybody, including me in that big sit-down interview, that Michael had run out of gas in 1998, and because of his loyalty to Phil, he was just going to flat out retire. Remember, we're talking about the greatest player who ever played in any team sport, willing to walk away in the heart of his prime, or at least at the end of his prime, and missing his age 35, 36, and 37 season by just sitting out, which is what he ultimately, as we know, did. But when I asked Michael about Phil's contention that, that Michael would just up and retire, Michael really coldly replied to me, that's Phil's opinion. And that was the first sign of life and hope that I heard from Michael Jordan. And it made me very happy because there was no reason for Michael to go to. And as we all know, Jerry Krause had plucked Phil Jackson out of obscurity. He was a coach in the CBA for the Albany Patroons, hired him as assistant coach. Then when Phil kissed up and buddied up to Jerry Krause, Jerry fell in love with Phil and finally replaced Doug Collins with Phil Jackson. Doug had coached Michael for three of his early years. And yet, once Phil got hold of the reins of the organization and they won their first championship, Phil completely turned on Jerry. He had just duped him to get the job and began to mistreat him just the way Michael and Scotty shamed and ridiculed little tiny, the penguin, as I called him, Jerry Krause. So Jerry Krause was livid and wanted to get even with Phil. We get that. And he already had a handshake agreement with Tim Floyd from Iowa State to be the new coach of the Bulls. So I publicly encouraged Michael to just forget about Phil. Forget about Tim Floyd, as they called him Pink Floyd off the rock group. That was their sarcastic term for him because <laughs> Phil loved Pink Floyd. And... And I thought Michael could then go to Jerry Krause and say, hey, look, I, I realize the bridge is burned between Jerry and Phil. I got it. They they'll never coexist again. So let's forget about Phil. But don't give me Tim Floyd or Pink Floyd. Give me a real coach. Bring back Doug Collins. Obviously, Doug ultimately went with Michael for his last 
hurrah years, 38 and 39 years old in Washington. Give me Doug Collins back. Give me anybody who's a made man in the NBA as a head coach, anybody with credibility, stature, and experience, and I'll go forward. Why Michael wouldn't do that to this day haunts me because that was the move to be made. And I believe Jerry Reinsdorf would have compromised with that move. Keep Jerry Krause as the GM, bring in another coach that Michael signs off on, not Tim Floyd. But as we all know, Michael stuck by his guns inexplicably, which is why I can't wait for maybe episode 10 of The Last Dance. I want to hear what Michael says about this because I wrote to conclude my column in May and June that year. I, I said the worst sports thought I could ever think is Michael Jordan gone at age 35 and Phil still coaching at 53. And as we all know, Phil went right on, it took one year, he went right on to the Lakers and wound up coaching Shaq and Kobe to three straight championships. And what did I always call Phil? I, everybody called him the Zen master. I called him the spin master. I never trusted him. I never trusted his sort of Spengali hold over Michael. Michael was very impressionable when it came to Phil. And I believe that Phil talked or almost duped Michael into retiring out of loyalty to Phil when he did not need to. Phil didn't retire. Phil went on and won three more championships in a row with Shaq and Kobe. He had a three-peat in L.A. So I believe that Michael also got taken for a ride by the spin master, as I call him. And in the end, it was the most confounding and actually the saddest story I've ever covered. Well, to your point, let me start with your points before I make mine, Skip. The reason why he didn't talk to Jerry Krause because Jerry Krause and Jerry Reinsdorf were two people that he couldn't bully. Because you know why, Skip? They had more power within the organization than him. See, you can bully Steve Kerr and Scotty Burrell and some of those others because they're player. You are the best player, so you have, uh, uh, you're able to, to reign over them with your tenure, with your play. But you notice he can never bully Jerry Krause. Every player that he basically said he wanted, Skip, and this is documented, Jerry Krause went and got somebody totally opposite. If Jerry Reinsdorf, and like I said, Jerry Krause took a lot of criticism, took a lot of heat, but Jerry Krause was just a shield. This was Jerry Reinsdorf because he could have made all this a moot point. He could have said, Jerry, you're going to stand down on this. We're going to keep this thing rolling until the wheels fall off. But when Jerry Krause went to Jerry Reinsdorf and says, this is what I want to do, okay. You see what happened, Skip? It happened again. Rest his soul with A. Polian in Washington. You see, when people have more power than you, you can't bully them. That's why he couldn't bully Jerry Krause. He could have, like you said, he could have, but he knew what the answer was. Jerry Krause made it abundantly clear. He can go 82-0, and 0, win all of his playoff games by 30, and he's still not coming back. And if Michael retires, Michael's earned the right to do whatever he wants to do. So it was a moot point. So he was like, I'm not wasting my time because there might be a time later in life I'm going to need that energy. I'm going to need that breath that I'm wasting on Jerry Krause and Jerry Reinsdorf. That's why he didn't do it, Skip. You know why he didn't do it. Because he couldn't bully them. He couldn't put them in a corner like, hold on, Skip. Well, I, I thought winning. So you, are you mean to tell me he said winning? And if you don't want to win, get out, get out the way or move and don't do it? Jerry Krause never said, nah, we good here. Skip, look, at the end of the first three-peat, he said that he was exhausted. He was tired. Uh, the media barrage, the constant barrage, the constant criticism. And it has started to, you know, they started to say, well, what happened with your father was a direct correlation of what was transpiring with Michael in his personal life. I don't believe that. But the constant criticism, Skip, you mean me the toughest the most mentally tough guy in the history of sports couldn't handle media criticism? Wow. Imagine what he would have to go through in the social media age today. Imagine what LeBron James hears constantly. There was no uh, debate show. There was no 24-hour news cycle on sports in 98, 97, when Michael was in his heyday, in his prime. Can you imagine the criticism if some of the things that was reported going gambling, um, Skip, the day of, uh, what was that, the, uh, the night after or the day before, 
uh, uh, playoff games or the constant golfing. Can you imagine the criticism? Imagine a guy, a player now, Skip, in basketball, say it be LeBron James or Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and that would be the caught, caught in the casino before a championship game or after a championship game. They would get reamed. He got but reamed. That was a thing. He got Skip, reamed. He was caught. Yeah, that, that everybody wrote about it. Everybody wrote. It was everywhere. And, and that's my point. The criticism, the barrage. Remember, Magic said, y'all keep being on the guy. You're going to run him away from the game. Imagine what LeBron has been going through since he was 17, the constant criticism. I'm just saying, Skip, the thing was, and I agree with you on this. At, this is what you and I agree. You and I agree that Jared Reinsdorf and Jared Crouch should have let this thing roll out. Let all the gas run out of the car, Skip. And if it runs, it run, puts you down side the road in the middle of the season, oh, well, you put you down in the middle of the season. But I don't believe he should have broken it up. I believe he should have let somebody else break it up, Skip. Normally, Empire, Skip, normally Empire just don't say, you know what? We're tired of uh, uh, lauding over all this vast territory. You know what? Let's just give it up. Normally, somebody from the outside comes and takes it over or Within this case, like the Roman Empire, it fell from within, Skip. So when I look at it, I agree. Yeah, I believe Jerry Krause, Jerry Reinsdorf should have let it go. But Michael, do I believe Michael should have at least voiced it, gone to Jerry Krause, gone to Jerry Reinsdorf? But I believe, Skip, like he said with Scotty, they never tore up Michael, Skip, they never tore up Michael Jordan's contract. So the likelihood of them tearing up Scotty's contract and extending him when they never did that for Michael, was not going to happen. And remember in the doc, Skip, <laughs> uh, Michael says Scotty knew Jerry Krause wasn't going to do that contract, uh, uh, redo his contract. So Michael, having been with Jerry Krause basically since after his first year, 1985, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, he took over for Rod Thorne. He knew Jerry Krause front with him back. And when Jerry Krause got something in his head, Skip, that was it. it there was no turning back. But I thought of all this, yes, Skip, Jerry Krause, maybe you don't like him. But I thought Jerry Reinsdorf. Jerry Reinsdorf, Skip, has been, been portrayed very favorably in this documentary. When you and I both know, when you peel everything away, he was the owner. Skip, how does a general manager have more control, more say-so within in an organization than the owner? If Jerry Reinsdorf, just like he did in 98, when he brought Phil back for that last dance, he could have said, I'm bringing Phil back again in 99 for another last dance. You know, Skip, you know, 550, well, encore. Well, I'm bringing Phil back. Could have been the last dance, Skip. I'm going to do an encore. You know, I, the, okay, that's it. And then the singer goes back, and then he comes back out and gives you a, another set, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes. That's what Jerry Reinsdorf could have demanded of Jerry Krause. Bring Phil back for an encore, encore, and we'll see how this thing plays out. But what I'm going to take most from the documentary, Skip, is that I, like I said, I knew about on the on-court stuff. But behind the scenes, the maniacal guy, what he was willing to endure, what he was willing to go through, what he was willing to push his teammates to get to a, to a level, that's what I'm most impressed with. Skip, like I said, being quarantined has forced me to watch something other than, you know, politics, Skip. And so I've watched a lot of documentaries. And so the doc, Skip, I knew Sam Cooke could sing. Just like you know Sam Cooke can sing. But when you watch his documentary, you get an opportunity to see a different side of Sam Cooke that you like. I did not know exist. I did not know he had that type of relationship with Muhammad Ali. I did not know that he was in Miami at that fight, Skip, and he and Jim Brown. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Muhammad Ali was in a room together. I didn't know that. So now you get an opportunity to see Michael Jordan off the court. Everybody saw him on the court, Skip, especially you did. You were covering day to day. But you saw some of the things behind the scenes. I did not know. I did not see that behind the scenes. So that was great for me to see. Is the show over? I have never heard one person talk so long on Undisputed in the history of this show as you just talked. You. you said a whole lot of nothing. Uh, let's get back yeah. to the first three, Pete. And you said, oh, he burned out. He couldn't take the media heat. Baloney. That's what he said. You agreed with me right here on the show. You agreed. I think it's my turn to talk now. You agreed that it had to do with gambling. It was some kind of a suspension slash forced no, hiatus. 
that he took off to play baseball. You agreed the first after the first couple of episodes. No. Yep, that's what was going on. You're suspicious no. about it. I'm real suspicious mm-hmm. about it to this day. It made no sense to me. He cost himself two championships right there. So he missed those two. He missed a season and about three-fourths of the next season and was not ready to play Orlando, obviously, in the playoffs and the conference finals. And now we fast forward to Jerry Reinsdorf. And I, I got to tell you, I resent you calling the GOAT a bully. He is not a bully. He was simply the greatest leader slash motivator in the history of sports. Not one player who played with him has called him a bully. Not one player has said publicly, I hate him. I couldn't stand him. They all thought there was method to the madness. All of his ridicule, whatever hell that he made some pay, it was all to make their weakness a strength. And they all contributed down the stretch. And I told you yesterday, I showed you that roster It was, to quote the great LeBron James, top heavy as bleep. It was Scottie Pippen, nothing but a a, a Robin to Batman. And then it was a Rodman who barely was able to stay in bounds thanks to the guidance of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And after that, it was just a bunch of guys that he turned into winners. He toughened all of them up. And when you say, oh, Jerry Reinsdorf is the one guy he couldn't bully, Baloney, he couldn't bully him. He just didn't try to use his power to power play him. If he had gone okay. public, if he had come to me and said, I need you to print this, print that. I went to Jerry Reinsdorf and I said, Jerry, pick any coach who is experienced in the NBA, not Tim Floyd. I will stay for two more years and we'll win two more championships. If he had said that, that's a power play. I don't think Jerry Reinsdorf could have withstood the media beating he would have taken under those conditions. But Michael got Svengali'd, he got Machiavellined by by Phil Jackson. Phil talked him into, we've got to do this together. We've got to retire. We've got to quit on them. Let's quit together. And Phil quit for one year, and then he goes to L.A. and coaches Shaq and Kobe. No, no, Skip, no, no, no. Don't cut, don't wimp out. Say pick any coach you like, and I come back. Bring Phil back. That's the ultimate power play. Tell Jerry Reinsdorf, bring no. Phil back and let us win two. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, Hold you on. can't win you that. Mean one. To tell me to go? No, can't win Why? it. Why? Can't win it. Why? No. He Michael Jordan. Jordan. Phil. Well, I just told you what happened. Phil had turned on Kraus. Kraus picked Phil, and he turned on him. He duped him into getting picked and getting elevated, Mm -hmm. and he turned on him. Michael Mm -hmm. could not defend that. Michael bought into the spin master's spin, so it was up to Michael to step back and say, you know what, in the end, Kraus, Phil, they're just two June bugs on my windshield in the finals, Mm -hmm. splattering Uh on my windshield. I can go forward by myself. Mm -hmm. My team is not too old. Scotty went on and played six more years. Steve Kerr went on and won two more rings. Ron Harper went on and won two more rings with the Lakers. Every player on that team went on. Dennis Rodman went on and averaged 10 rebounds for the Mavericks and then 14 for the Lakers. They all still had plenty of gas in the tank to win two more championships. It should have been 10 yeah. straight championships <laughs> for Michael Jordan. Stop it, and then Stop. you would not have Stop. any leg to stand on. But see, I'm, it's just like it's just like his bullying. It was very selective in who he chose to bully. bully. I read a story yesterday, Skip. I read a story yesterday about him and Robert Parrish. And Robert Parrish says, "I'm not enamored with you because I have rings." Michael said, "I'm gonna kick your, you know what?" The chief says, "I took two steps toward him and says, no, you're not." And Michael, I never had another problem with Michael. You see, Michael had selective, as Charles Barkley said, he had selective bullying. Who he knew who to bully and who to get him and who he could bully and who he oh, couldn't. Stop why it. didn't he go if Skip, if he's what you said he is, why not go to Jared Reinsdorf? Make a power play. Go to Skip Baylor. Skip, I want you to write this and I want you to put it in big yep. bold letters. Jared yep. Reinsdorf, if you bring Phil back, I'll come back. He mm-hmm. didn't do that because yep. Skip. There is no man, Skip. 
Nobody can bully a billionaire unless you're on their level. Michael Jordan wasn't on their level. Now, maybe now, if he was a billionaire and you can transport him back and he'd be 34 and have the amount of money that he has, okay, we could have a different argument. But at that time, Jerry Ryan Storm looked at him like, uh, you still a player. I pay your salary. You're rich, I'm wealthy. There's a difference between the two. That's why he couldn't bully him, Skip Bayless. You can make it all, all you want to. He didn't want that pick a coach. But that's what bullies do. They select guys they view as weak, and they pick on them. He knew Jerry Krause had more power within the organization than he did, and so did Jerry Reinsdorf because he owned the team. So that's why he didn't bully. You can dress it up. You can dress it up all you want to and say, well, you out in Shannon, you talk, and you said absolutely nothing. But at the end of the day, as simple as this, that's what you I got from the documentary. Nothing. You're still got, saying absolutely he, nothing. He, he got, got spun he got, by the spin master. But that's what he, happened. Everybody's Phil, Phil convinced, him, Phil convinced him. Phil convinced him, let's both take a year. Let's quit. Let's walk into the sunset together. And <laughs> Phil kept walking and walking and walked all the way to L.A. to coach Shaq and Kobe. Hold on, way to go, Michael. I'm you to took three Phil. years off. A man, the, the most mentally tough, the guy that has the strongest mind in the history of sports got spun. He got duped. Mm -hmm. He got led astray. Yep. He got run amok. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I'm confused, Skip, now. How can a man that has the strongest man, the most indomitable will in the history of team sports, maybe in sports, period, mm -hmm. how could he let a man dupe him? Skip, I'm confused. Now, you need to, you need to share some mm -hmm. light. I'm going to turn it back over to you. You need yeah. to tell me how does a man that has that kind of intestinal fortitude, that kind of mind, gets duped. I need to hear from you right now. Because because uh, as opposed to LeBron James, he actually looked up to and respected coaches, head coaches. LeBron has always coached his own team. And I, I'm going to quit saying I resent it because in the end, all you've got now is bully. Oh, now I can dismiss him as a bully. It's the no. biggest crock that you've ever tried to sell yeah. on this show before. It's all you've got. In the end, it's over. Thank you, last dance. It's the last dance for you and your LeBron is the GOAT argument, which is the weakest argument in the history of sports. But Skip, you make it seem like two things can't be true. That because a person is a great athlete, he must be a great person. He must be a great leader. And every great attribute that comes along with being a great athlete, when you and I both know that's not true. But you try to play that because you want Michael Jordan to be this, this idyllic figure, this perfect. There's no, nothing wrong with Michael. He has no flaw. Yes, you do. I, he, I, I told I, you from the start. I told you before the documentary started, it's going to come across that he's merciless, ruthless, heartless, method to madness. Six championships in six tries with six MVPs with a team that was not that talented. That is basketball the, genius. That is GOAT. And the, two, and, and the two little white guys in the suits, he couldn't bully. The two smallest guys, he couldn't bully, and it broke up. Bam! Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.